Alright guys, we've got plenty to discuss in today's episode of the Championship Roundup. We've got 12 fixtures to go ahead and dive into that took place over the weekend. We also have a couple of matches that are coming up in midweek as well, so if you want to get involved with those predictions, make sure to go ahead and leave them down below. But without any further ado, let's hop into the action. And starting out on Friday night, we had QPR beating Reading by two goals to one. A good way to go ahead and kick off the weekend between these two. Third going up against fourth. And in the end, it's been pretty much the perfect weekend for QPR, to be honest. There were a few controversial decisions in this one which went against them. But top two both lost this weekend. QPR gained some ground back on both of them. They continued their impressive unbeaten streak at the moment. They managed to get past Reading in this one. It was uh, QPR who had a bit of a stonewall penalty turned down in that first half, a handball that wasn't given. Reading then respond via a penalty of their own. Andy Cowell goes ahead and sticks that one away. But not too long after, Lyndon Dykes goes ahead and responds. And he really was QPR's hero in this one. Dykes, who up until this point of the season, I think has had quite a frustrating year up until this point. Um, I don't think there's any hide in that. But brilliant equaliser. And then he obviously had the steal to go ahead and step up for the winning penalty in the end. It was just QPR who managed to turn the screw that a little bit more in the second half and winning it from the penalty spot. So great stuff there from QPR. Um, up in third place now on 20, 24 points, same as Norwich. Next then for St Andrews for Birmingham 3, Bristol City 0. I mean, talk of Bristol City being a streaky team. Yeah, that's how they sort of built up their reputation in the championship over the years. But this switch of momentum has been absolutely brutal for Bristol City, who overnight have sort of reverted to type in terms of their defensive structure. Birmingham causing them all sorts of problems from set-piece scenarios throughout this one. And in the end, the home side were uh, the richly deserved victors of this one. Trusty with a couple of first half goals and then Deion Sanderson going ahead and wrapping this one up all three of Birmingham's goals like I say coming from set pieces and from Bristol City's perspective, defensively, once again, it was just an absolute shambles um, as they were all over the place. And there have been a few examples of that so far this season. It's so frustrating, though, because, you know, only a few weeks ago, really, it seemed like Pearson had perfectly cracked the formula of that balance between your sort of attack and defence. And that's been the sort of fine act that he's trying to um, sort of balance from his time being there. But they got it completely wrong in this one. And Birmingham, when they want to be, can be a really effective side, particularly from those scenarios and a great way for them to bounce back from the midweek defeat. It's then to Blackburn 3 Rotherham 0, massively needed result there for Blackburn, whose recent run of form has been absolutely staggering. If we take into consideration the results they've had across all competitions, their last 10 matches have been win-loss, 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 win-loss exactly down to a T. So yeah, really confusing side at the moment, Blackburn who can't seem to build up any sort of momentum but have this unbelievable bounce back ability. Uh, the first half was an interesting one between these two where uh, Blackburn obviously took the lead from the penalty spot it was a silly penalty to give away um, from a Rotherham perspective really just grabbing around the shoulder because other than that Rotherham had offered a threat in that first half and did have quite a few opportunities to go ahead and get something back second half looked to be a little bit of a different story Rotherham uh, went back into their shells a little bit more and Blackburn obviously had that attacking quality to go ahead and kill off this game Broughton with his second of the game and then Sammy Smollicks to go ahead and add the third on top so yeah yeah, are Blackburn going to get the chance to build some momentum on top of this, or will the ridiculous win-loss streak continue for them? Next then to Blackpool 3, Watford 1, a much needed result for Blackpool who had been on quite a difficult run of form leading up into this game. It was a tough one to put your finger on with Blackpool really because leading up to this game they've had spells in matches where they looked a million miles off the pace but there were also examples of them continuing to create chances but it just wasn't quite clicking for them in the final third. Well everything finally came together for them in this game. Took the lead after just 10 minutes through Gary Medine. An unbelievable equaliser from Watford um, and from loser. That free kick perfectly executed and when you've got players as good as Watford have you are going to have those individual moments of quality but talk about having the shortest new manager bounce of all time literally Slavin Bilic came to Watford like he had a plan 4-0 against Stoke in his first game week but back-to-back -back losses have followed that up and in the second half Watford saw plenty of the ball but all the chances were being created by Blackpool and this wasn't as if it was a smashing grab sort of performance uh, the chances had been coming for Blackpool leading up to them 
getting that second goal. You know, they were knocking on the door. And once again, as it has been quite a few times this season, it was Daniel Backman keeping the away side in the game. But Jerry Yates with the goal to make it 2-1. And then the goal to go ahead and wrap it up was an outrageous bit of technique. The skills on show for that one, the composure as well, when he's got as many defenders around him as he has. And uh, yeah, a real moment of quality from him there. And a much needed result for Blackpool, given their recent run of form. But Watford, I think their problems have only been magnified um, since Slavin Bilic has come in and out across these last two matches for them. There's so much groundwork that needs to be done on this squad. It's scary. After that, we had Coventry... After that, we have Burnley beating Coventry by one goal to nil. Coventry do remain rooted to the bottom of the championship. They had started to grind out a few results, but up against Burnley proved to be one step too far for them. And I have to admit, the goal Burnley scored was a moment of real quality. Cullen with that vision to go ahead and pick out the run of Teller, then having the execution to go ahead and pull off that long ball. But the touch, the spatial awareness from Teller, and then the finish from the tight angle that he squeezes it in at is absolutely absolutely sublime obviously I, honestly every time I get to watch Teller I think he just gets better and better and I think he'll be a special player for Burnley over the course of this season. From Coventry's perspective they just look to be a little bit isolated going forward. Defensively they were sold enough in not giving away that many big opportunities to this Burnley side who we expected to go ahead and dominate the ball but going forward themselves and offering up a threat um, I think they finished this match without having a shot on target so disappointing from their standing and the unbeaten run goes on for Burnley. Next up then to the den for Millwall 2, Middlesbrough nil. We did speak about Middlesbrough picking up that result last time. Would they be able to build a little bit of momentum on the back of it? Now, it wasn't the finest of performance when they got past Birmingham, but points on the board is ultimately all that really matters for Borough um, because of how slow they've started this season. But this was a performance where they... I really just reverted to type. They were really poor looking um, and shoddy throughout this one. Despite having more of the ball, they ultimately did very little with it to go ahead and craft out many opportunities. And it was Millwall who were uh, richly deserving of all three points. Don't get me wrong, there was an error of fortune about Millwall's opener from that set piece and um, taking the big deflection that it did to take it away from the keeper. But Fleming was in the mood for Millwall in this one. He was at the centre of a lot of what they were doing in the final third. And the defending for his second goal was absolutely awful from Middlesbrough, giving him an absolute acre of space to go ahead and get that finish in. So, yeah, 2-0 Millwall, richly deserved in the end. Uh, I thought they could have won in midweek, to be honest, given the amount of chances they created in that game, but had that clinical edge about them in this one, but Middlesbrough really looked all over the shop. Next then to Carroll Road for Norwich 2, Preston North End 3, a Preston side who's just been devoid of goals all season suddenly comes up with a five-goal thriller in this one. Now, I'm not going to lie, I was fearing for the worst when when Josh Sargent pulled Norwich ahead after just two minutes. It was a fine finish from a player who started out this season on a real hot streak and from that point up until when North End equalised, it really was Norwich who were knocking on the door and seemingly wanting to kill this game off as early as possible. But we managed to go ahead and hang in there and then Emil Reese on target once again, this time with a headed effort, Robbie Brady with the assist. I think the North End are so much more fluid and dynamic with Alvaro Fernandez on the pitch. And once again, it was him and Emil Reese linking up for our second goal um, of the game in this one. Norwich do then get back into it through Sarah, and once again at that point, I'm fearing for the worst. I'm thinking, okay, Norwich got a little bit of momentum back about them. Perhaps they're going to go on and win this one. But then Troy Parrott, of all people, who's had such a difficult season in front of goal so far, um, goes ahead and sneaks that effort in for 3-2. Norwich then have the ball in the back of the net once again, and it was a fine strike from Kenny McLean, but ultimately ruled out because of a foul um, by Grant Hanley. Watching it back, I, I get it was a little bit soft, but it was just such a needless foul from Hanley, getting involved with the defender when the ball was absolutely nowhere near him, grappling him and the referee was watching all of it. It was just such a needless foul, and I think he's really only got himself to blame um, for that one being ruled out, to be honest. The referee didn't have the greatest of games. I didn't think in this one for either side. I thought there was a Byram tackle um, that was quite lucky to go without a red card as a punishment really high on Alan Brown um, in the first half but North End holding out for all three points and yeah what a result in the end uh, back to back wins for us now Norwich 
just sliding away a little bit and I think that before this we had spoken about some of those performances not quite being up to scratch even when they were winning some of those games. Next then to Stoke 3, Sheffield United 1. I think it's fair to say that the injuries have started to take quite the toll on this Sheffield United squad. They have lost a, quite a bit of ground over these last few matches but um, obviously still sit top as a side like Norwich hasn't been able to go ahead and capitalise on their bad form recently. From Stoke's perspective, I mean a hell of a lot can change in football over the span of just one week. I think if we were com to compare the performance against Watford, their last home game to this one against Sheffield United, absolutely night and day. So much more grit, determination um, and running power about this Stoke squad and everything that you'd sort of come to expect from an Alex Neal team to be honest with you. Uh, Wilmot Jagielka and the lap with the goals for Stoke in this one but a real key performer I thought looked like Tarek Fossu, looked like he had a really good game and I think that when he is utilised further up the pitch in his more natural favoured position. You know, it looked like Stoke went for a front three for this game instead of how he's sometimes been operating as a wing back. I think he's much more suited to that position and causing danger um, to, you know, opposition fullbacks as high up the pitch as possible. So, yeah, really good result there from Stoke. They'll be hoping that that's a sign of things to come under Alex Neal. Next then to Swansea up against Sunderland. Two sides who have had really quite contrasting weeks in these sort of three game weeks. Momentum can massively shift and Swansea have had the perfect week. Uh, three wins from their last three games and really tipped off by this performance against Sunderland. Sunderland on the flip side of that back to back goal of straws and then followed it up with this loss against Swansea. First half Sunderland couldn't really get their footing in this game and it was Swansea who were very much in the ascendancy. Goals from Cooper and Darling had them 2-0 up at half time. Second half Sunderland did start to grow into the game a little bit more, have some more cutting edge about them in the final third clock. Uh, obviously grabs that goal back them and there were some other opportunities in that second half as well but Swansea were by far and away the better side I thought um, in this game. Patterson I think has been a real key performer for Sunderland uh, this last week or so uh, he made a, another string of saves in this one as well to keep Swansea at bay but yeah seriously impressive stuff from Swansea now. Four wins on the bounce really starting to get some momentum going under Russell Martin and for Sunderland they're just sort of stuck at the moment in limbo aren't they? And we saw West Brom playing out a goal of straw with Luton Town and this ultimately being the final game in charge for Steve Bruce. I was astonished really that Bruce was even given this game against Luton given their form leading up to this one. I really thought that the defeat against Preston in midweek would have been the final nail in the coffin but he was still afforded this game and realistically it was just more of the same for West Brom. Plenty of uh, the ball in the around the Luton box but no real sort of penetration and ultimately a lot of half chances that Luton managed to defend well. Luton did have a few threats of their own but ultimately this one fizzled out um, to a goalless draw and West Brom uh, still sat in the relegation zone 22nd with just 11 points and one win so far this season. And Baggies fans, who would you like to see coming in as the new manager? I've already seen a few names that have been linked with the job. To be honest, there are quite a few high profile championship managers who are now out of work so West Brom certainly won't be short of options. One name that's been thrown into the ring from absolutely nowhere though has been Roy Keane, I think perhaps because he was at the Preston-West Brom game in midweek, maybe that's people putting two and two together, but they absolutely need to get this next managerial appointment spot on, and I don't really buy the argument that this isn't you know, a very talented group of players, I still think West Brom have got one of the best starting 11s in the league when everyone's fit in terms of talent, um, they've just been mismanaged uh, badly so far this season season but yeah that next appointment needs to be spot on. And then we had Cardiff beating Wigan by three goals to one. Really good performance from Cardiff on the road this one. Some really well worked goals and I think that Wigan's Achilles heel in this one was getting off to a little bit of a slow start and letting Cardiff go ahead and generate that momentum. Uh, Callum Robinson who has been in the goals for them recently lovely finish to make it 1-0 as they went in at half time with that score line. Uh, Ojo then makes it two for Cardiff and there were plenty of other chances for the away side before Wigan pulled one back but a beautifully taken free kick to catch the goalkeeper out from Wintle goes ahead and wraps this one up for Cardiff. It's a little bit of a strange phenomenon with Wigan to be honest. Their home fans haven't
haven't got great value for money so far this season. Wigan are currently the only championship club yet to have won a home match so far this season. So they do sit bottom of the form table when it comes to home matches. But it's a complete reversal when it comes to away matches. They've been the best side on the road so far this season in terms of points accumulated. So yeah, a bit of an underbaked performance from Wigan there. But Cardiff fully took advantage and looked uh, really quite good for it with what they had in the final third. And we saw Huddersfield getting back to winning ways with a 2-0 win over Hull. The first time this season that I'm going to head back to Huddersfield for all three points. I was happy to see that they repaid my faith in them with all three points. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't a vintage performance or anything like that, but just getting this side back to basics, keeping a clean sheet and having some more threat about them in the final third are the sort of basic foundations that Fotheringham's having to lay down with this Huddersfield squad at the moment and sort of listening to him after the match very much seems to be a manager with a plan a philosophy of culture that he wants to implement at the club and um, that really is you know hard working people are going to succeed here um, at Huddersfield he's not going to um, let any of those standards slide which perhaps they have um, earlier on in the season I think this performance as well goes to show just how much is needed to be done at Hull at this point in time and how they need to get this next managerial appointment absolutely spot on bit of a nightmare start to the game for them with that Louis Coyle own goal and they were equally weak and um, from the Helic goal as well defensively they've been um, absolutely all over the place this season and the fact that they couldn't find their flow in the final third against a Huddersfield side who have been quite vulnerable at the back is also a cause for concern but great result there from Huddersfield they'll be hoping that's the start of something under following him but guys those were all the matches that we had over the weekend do leave your thoughts on them in the comments down below and before we go ahead and wrap up today's video we do have a couple of midweek matches to go ahead and predict so starting out with the Tuesday night game that sees Wigan Athletic going up against Blackburn and something has to give between one of these two sides and their quite bizarre record so far this season Wigan yet to win at home wasn't their greatest of performances over the weekend against Cardiff but we'll be looking for a reaction in this one and we'll also see whether or not Blackburn can put an end to this ridiculous win-loss streak that they currently find themselves on. Blackburn also yet to go ahead and draw a match in the championship so far this season and do you know what I'm just going to back the win-loss streak to continue for Blackburn and finally Wigan get that first home win of the season. 2-1 Wigan I'm saying for that game but I mean that one really could go either way. Two quite funny sides to call there. And then on Wednesday night, we see Bristol City going up against my side, Preston North End. It's an interesting one, obviously. These are rescheduled games, and I think Preston fans, myself included, will be a hell of a lot more confident going into this game than we would have been for when this game was originally supposed to take place. But, uh, yeah, back-to-back -back wins for North End. More goals about us recently, scoring three away at Norwich. I think we can take some confidence from that. And also the fact of how many goals Bristol City have been conceding themselves. I do still see the attack threats that Bristol City will have in their side and Nigel Pearson will be desperate to get a reaction from what was a really below par performance over the weekend and for a prediction in this one I think I'm going to play it safe and go for a 1-1 draw don't think there'll be all too much in that game but those are my thoughts going into the midweek games like I said we've only got two but do get your score predictions in the comments down below that will go ahead and wrap it up for today's video there guys so if you did go on to enjoy make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content thanks for watching though guys and I'll see you all in the next one